In this video, I want to explain uh, latent Dirichlet allocation LDA applied to, uh, to topic modeling using Gibbs sampling. So uh, this is more of an old school or traditional method, but can still be useful to understand. And uh, it was sort of a very popular method. It's an unsupervised method, and it's uh, one that I think uh, Andrew Ung is most cited for of all the papers that he's written. So uh, it can be useful to understand, I think. Uh, this this is not the uh, the paper on LDA by Andrew Ung, but rather it's a sort of an explanation paper or a uh, tutorial on this area. So it tries to make it more easy to understand because this is a this is a difficult topic and like there are there are many details of it. Hopefully, this video will give you a, a a good understanding of it, and we will also in the next video we will implement it. Uh, so we will know uh, and get a good sort of, uh, uh, we will get something working as well. All right, so this is a theoretical and practical implementation tutorial on topic modeling and Gibbs sampling. So first of all, you, you know, this is applied to topic modeling. Uh, so topic modeling is basically that we have uh, a bunch of documents and we want to know, uh, basically we want to know this particular document, what percentage of each topic is it. So what topic does this document belong to? But we also want to know what words belong to that particular topic. So what this will learn is basically uh, like a, uh, it will learn like this, like topic one has these words, and then topic two has these words. And then if we input a document, which with a bunch of text like this, so this is our document, then we can check, all right, which words are used in this document, and thereby we can classify the percentage of topic one, like it's 50% topic one and 50% topic two based on the distribution of the words used. Um, so what this will do, we will use LDA with Gibbs sampling to come up with this, uh, and this is unsupervised, so, um, and this is a method that is unsupervised. So we just input the text, the documents, and then it will learn it by itself. So the question is then, you know, what is uh, LDA? Uh, how does it work? And then uh, how do we make it work in practice using inference algorithm uh, Gibbs sampling? All right, so let's look at the introduction uh, following its publication in 2003. So this is an old paper. Latent Dirichlet allocation, LDA, has made topic modeling one of the most popular and most successful paradigms for both supervised and unsupervised learning. Uh, however, it is for many particular newcomers a difficult area to break into due to its relative complexity and the common practice of leaving out implementation details in papers. All right, this technical report will describe what topic modeling is, how various models LDA in particular work, and most importantly, how to implement a working system to perform learning with topic models. All right, so following the introduction to topic modeling through LDA, the pro problem of posterior inference will be discussed. So the thing is that uh, the model is a generative model, uh, but we want to use it to classify a document into a topic. So for that, we will use have to use the posterior um, to convert a generative model into a, into a discriminative one, I believe is the term. All right, latent Dirichlet allocation. Uh, I will refer to the standard NLP use case where a corpus is a collection of documents and the data are words. The generative process for document collection D under the LDA model is as follows. So here we will try to understand this. Uh, first of all, we use the Dirichlet uh, distribution. And what that is, is basically that we have, we can view it like this. If we have um, of three, uh, Dirichlet of three dimensions, so we have either an alpha or a beta term here. Let's say we have beta. This is three values like this a value here, here and here. So you can view it as each of them representing a topic. Topic two, topic three. And how the this beta term this uh, defines how the topics are 
uh, distributed. So for example, uh, it could be that, you know, it's very dense in the middle so that each topic has, each document has a sort of a uniform distribution over the topics and then uh, the density becomes less and less uh, sort of as we go outwards. But we could also have a distribution that looks more like this where we have that, you know, either it's topic one or it's topic, uh, topic one or it's topic three or topic two. And then it's sort of very sparse in the middle. Hopefully you get the point here is that basically uh, we have a directly distribution over the topics. And then we also have one over the words. So we have a directly that says, you know, for a particular topic. So fix one topic, fix topic one. So fix that one for that topic. We also have another Dirichlet distribution that says how are the words distributed for this particular topic? So maybe, you know, you can imagine uh, we have, I don't know, like environment as one topic and we have fruit as another. And then you can imagine. So first of all, we have that each of these topic is distributed, maybe 70% are about the environment and 30% are about fruit. And then we have a distribution over that particular topic and the word. So maybe we have energy, I don't know, energy power or something like, that. I don't know, just a bunch of words. And then here we have apple, uh, orange. And so we have a distribution over those. And that is what the second Dirichlet distribution here is uh, for. You know, these, these uh, beta and alpha terms basically describe, you know, how this is going to be distributed. So if we change the, the parameters of it, then we could either have this one right here, which is more at the edges, or we could have this one, which is more centered, uh, depending on the parameters. Um, so let's see if we can understand now this. So for each topic, we have a Dirichlet distribution that says, let's see, we have phi k is a discrete probability distribution over a fixed vocabulary that represents the kth topic distribution. And theta d is a document specific distribution over the available topics. Zi is the topic index for word wi. All right, so that can be a little bit difficult to understand. Let us try to uh, make it more easier, uh, easier to understand. So first of all, we have one loop that creates a Dirichlet over each topic. So we have K topics and we create one for each. So what this tells us is the words distribution for, um, for a particular topic. So topic, topic K. So it tells us, you know, what words are common in this one. For example, if we go back, we have environment. Well, Hopefully we'll come up that you know, the result will be that we have energy, power, and so on. Um, that's what it will try to learn. So we create that first. And then for each document, so we have a, for each document here, we create another Dirichlet that says, how are um, how is it distributed over this document? So for each document then, we want to know what is the di distribution over topics for this particular document. So, you know, this document might be, I don't know, 60% uh, sixty fruit and 40% uh, environment. I don't know why any document would be about fruits and environment, but I don't know. It could be, I guess. So then we have, uh, so we have two Dirichlet distributions now, as I said, words distributed for a particular topic. And then we have a Dirichlet, uh, what topics are in this particular document. So then what we do is, uh, and this is a generative model, we go through for each word in the document, uh, you know, depending on how many words we want to have, we first sample uh, from theta d, which says what topic this word should belong to. So it's 60% that it's going to be fruit, 40% that it's going to be environment. So we sample the topic, you know, this is going to be topic uh, zero or topic one maybe. And then the second is uh, we will sample a word which comes from the word distributed for a particular topic, so phi k. So here we sample sample uh, word from topic zi. All right. So hopefully this was clear. Uh, this is a little bit difficult to understand. 
Dan maybe, but um, because you have to understand what is the Dirichlet distribution, which tells us in this case, you know, how the topics are distributed or the uh, the words for each topic, and then also how each document is distributed over topics. And then we also generate using uh, a multinomial distribution where we have now these probabilities, then we, we sample from it. Um, but so obviously this is a sampling method or a generative method. We want to then convert it so that we can classify uh, a document, but that's for later. Uh, one thing here is that they also say that alpha and beta are hyperinferred symmetric Dirichlet distributions. Um, I believe that this is at least initially, so I don't know, I think it's a little bit unclear uh, in this one because I don't think they are always going to be symmetric. They're, they might change, uh, you know, as we learn them. It might be that, for example, that topic three is much more popular than topic one or two. It's not gonna be that every is sort of uniformly as popular, I believe. So here, this um, is initially. So when we initialize them and then we'll learn all right, so what we want to, again, they say here, degenerative process described above results in the following joint distribution. So we have a probability for a particular word, topic, and using these um, Dirichlet distributions where we are giving the alpha and beta. Then we can just rewrite them using conditional probability. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think that's too important. The unobserved latent variables Z, theta and phi are what, the, are what is of interest to us. Each theta d is a low dimensional representation of a document in topic space, uh, as we uh, talked about. Each set i represents which topic generated the word instance wi, and each phi k represents a k times w matrix. Yeah, so let's see. So I don't believe this is correct either, actually. I think here, so we have phi k here. This is for a particular topic. Topic K, we have a distribution over the word. So I think this should be maybe one times W here. Uh, we have that phi as a, as a whole is um, K times W, I believe, because we have K of these phi uh, that we sort of index by little k. But let's see, so what does this actually tell us? It tells us that we have, again, that we described, theta d is a representation of what a document is, what topics belong to a particular document. And then we have the phi are the words for that particular topic. So from that, we can get the probability that we generate a particular word from a particular topic. All right, one of the most interesting aspects of LDA is that it can learn in an unsupervised manner words that we would associate with certain topics. Yeah, so for example, here is uh, if they run it on the Enron email data set, uh, then we get also, yeah, environment and then travel and fantasy football. Then it's an example. These here, it doesn't actually tell us what this topic is, um, but rather it just tells us the words like this, and then you can guess what the topic is. All right, inference. So the key problem in topic modeling is posterior inference. So this refers to reversing the defined generative process. And again, so, you know, we can imagine that, you know, we have all these documents. We want to find the parameters alpha and beta or, yeah, we want to find what parameters are most likely to have generated these documents. And then from that, we can reverse it to classify each document. But uh, this is what we're interested in, right? We're not interested in generating uh, a lot of documents. We already have the documents. We want to know what they belong to. All right, so in LDA, this amounts to solving the following equation. Yeah, all right, so here uh, we are assuming that we are given the word, right, because we see a word in the document. We want to know what is the probability that it belongs to a particular topic. So we want to know what is the, given a word and we have the parameters for our distributions, alpha and beta, for our Dirichlet distributions, we want to know what is the probability that it belongs to this topic, uh, given our, you know, also our probability uh, distributions, uh, theta and phi. So we can use uh, just some uh, basic statistics and we can rewrite it as this. Uh, but now they say this, distribu this distribution is intractable to compute. Uh, particularly, we can't compute 
the denominator. But uh, there are a number of approximate inference techniques available, including variational inference, and that was used in the original LDA paper. And we also have Gibbs sampling, uh, which we will focus on uh, in this tutorial. So Gibbs sampling uh, is a member of Marco Chain Monte Carlo framework. And the goal here is to, uh, you know, Monte Carlo, Mar Marco Chain Monte Carlo algorithms aim to construct a Marco Chain that has a target posterior distribution as its stationary distribution. So uh, as we sample repeatedly, we get to the posterior distribution, um, sort of it, it, it converges to the posterior distribution. So in other words, after a number of iterations of stepping through the chain, sampling from the distribution should converge to be close to sampling from the desired posterior. The entire sort of idea here is that uh, it's very difficult to sample from the entire distribution. So if we look at this, if we have P of X and we have a bunch of uh, variables, it's very hard or impossible to sample from this, but it's easy to sample from the conditional where we, you know, we sample from X1 given X2 up to XM. So this is easy, but sampling from the entire is difficult. When that's the case, that's when we can use uh, Gibbs sampling. So Gibbs sampling is based on sampling from conditional distributions of the variables of the posterior. For example, to sample X from this, this P of X, but a representation for the conditional distribution is available. Using Gibbs sampling, one would perform the following. We first randomly initialize each XI, and then for a number of time steps, we sample a new uh, time step for X1, a new, new uh, sort of a, an improved value uh, from sort of um, an improved value that is more likely, right? And we do that by sampling. We sample from uh, our conditional X1 given all of the other ones. And then in the next, we sample the next variable of X. But then uh, one thing here is that we use, so we use this one, the, the sort of a slightly improved value for X1 in the next time step. So we do that just repeatedly a bunch, a bunch of steps. And then sort of in the end, uh, it will, uh, result in a point that is uh, actually, I guess, likely uh, according to a probability distribution rather than just some random point. Right. While convergence is theoretically guaranteed, there is no way of knowing how many iterations are, are required to reach the stationary distribution, such as something to keep in mind. In practice, however, it is quite powerful. All right. For LDA, we're interested in the latent document topic proportions, theta d, the topic word distributions phi z, and the topic index assignment for each word zi. And that's what we uh, talked about before. Uh, we note that both theta d and uh, phi z can be calculated using just the topic index assignment zi. I z is a sufficient statistic for both these distributions. So um, there essentially, if we have, right, if we improve, let's see, if we get Z, um, all right, so let's see, let's, if we get Z, that tells us what topic each word belongs to in each document. So we have a bunch of documents, um, and we know what topic each word in that document belongs to. So if we have that, right, we can look at all right, if we look for a particular topic, let's just fix the topic, topic one, what words are most common according to topic one? Well, we'll just go through each word in each document. We look and we do a count. Uh, you know, well, uh, we see that this word, I don't know, uh, energy is used a lot of times in topic one. And so this is number one. Number two, we have electricity. Uh, and then we have power and so on. So from Z, we can calculate the distribution of the words in a particular topic, right? This is phi. And then we can also look at a particular document, right? And we can see what are the, uh, what are the topic distribution for this particular document, right? So if we have a particular document, we can count, you know, how many, uh, sort of what is the number one most common topic? Well, it's, environment or whatever let's say topic one topic one is uh 60 of the cases 
uh, topic two frequency is topic two uh, with 40%, for example, if we just have two topics. So what I wanted to explain here is that uh, Y is set a sufficient statistic uh, rather than uh, we can, we, so what we don't have to do is uh, update the distribution itself, phi and theta. We can rather, uh, we can rather just update Z, which is the, our belief of a particular word in a document belonging to a particular topic if we just update that, we can, in the end, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can get phi and theta. So we don't have to worry about that. So they say here, uh, therefore, a simpler algorithm can be used if we integrate out the multinomial parameters and simply sample zi. This is called collapsed Gibbs sampler. So it's a little bit more efficient because we don't have to keep updating the distributions. All right. So what is it that you know for collapsed Gibbs? What is it that we need to do, or what are we, what are we interested in? We're interested in this distribution right here, where we want to sample a particular, uh, we want to update a particular word's topic, given that the, all the other ones are fixed. Uh, so we fix all other, they denote that by minus i, except for zi. Remember now that this is similar to what we see here for Gibbs. This is this Gibbs sampling, right? We fix all the other ones, and then we sample what is the next, uh, what is the topic for this word? And now in the next iteration, uh, we will use, when we use Z minus I, we will use this updated from the previous word. We up, we already updated it. And so we sort of do that iteratively and it it, it is there theoretically guaranteed to converge. All right, so then they, uh, what they do here is that they just, uh, let's see what they do actually. They, uh, yeah, they just rewrite this. Uh, and we're interested in zi, right? So what we can do then is uh, we can remove this and we can just say that it's proportional because this is just a constant um, uh, as the only the numerator here is the only one that contains contains zi. And then this is the same as as this because we use both zi and zi, uh, z minus i here. All right, so they just try to simplify. Remember that this is this to the left here is what we want. Uh, we see that it's proportional to this thing. And then let's see, they uh, they then continue to simplify it. So let's see, we use double integrals, use, so they write this first. As we saw previously, we could rewrite it with the conditional probabilities. We can uh, regroup with the ones that has theta and the one that has phi. We get this and here, uh, we can see that one of them, uh, when we when we uh, condition theta and we sample Z, that is a multinomial distribution. And when we have alpha uh, and we want to sample from, or we have this theta, then that's a Dirichlet distribution and similarly for the other one. And then we use a property that we have that Dirichlet is conjugate to the multinomial. This makes it simpler. Um, so we can look at one of these integrals, we can plug it in uh, and just, yeah, just simplify a little bit. And then we use that the, the fact that it's conjugacy, which alleviates a lot of the co uh, computation for us. And we just get this. Again, you can look at this in more detail if you want. I'm just trying to give an overview. Uh, and then similarly for this, they just plug in all of the actual probability distributions and then they simplify and then they use conjugacy at the, at the last step. So really they don't do much except simplify a little bit and then use conjugacy. All right, so then if we combine what we got here from the simplifications, we get this, uh, which is a little bit simpler now. Uh, and then what they do is that we can now use this even more. So we put this in and we see that we can rewrite it or we can write it as this. Um, and so what they use here is that they just plug in what we had for W and Z. So let's see, this is this right here. So they just plug this in, <laughs> all of this. And then they plug in the same thing except with minus I. And uh, you can imagine if you, I guess like if you divide all of this with the same thing except for now minus I for the Z, 
you can see that these will cancel because we divide with the same thing. And then in then, uh, let's see. So then we get here. Hopefully this is, I don't expect you to follow all this. And frankly, it's just simplifications. But here we see that we have this beta at the numerator. And then we have the same thing, but minus i in the denominator. All right. All they do then is that they plug in the definition for this function here, this function for all of them uh, and simplify. Uh, it's annoying. And then we get this. So basically, this is what to focus on. So what did we come up with? Well, uh, we now know that this. All right. So what did we get? Right. This is the important part. We get that if we look at a particular word uh, and fixing all of the others, we want to know what is the probability uh, for what topic this belongs to. And we see that it's proportional to this right here. So um, there is probably some quite intuitive explanation of this. Um, I didn't look at it that much to, to see one. But uh, essentially, all we need to know here is that, all right, we have a, a proportional probability for each uh, topic that this word can belong to. So then we just sample from that. Uh, so this is what we can sample from. Uh, basically, what is the probability that it's topic one? Well, it's 10%. What is the probability that it's topic two? Well, it's maybe 20%. Topic three, it's uh, 40%. And then we sample from that to get an updated uh, ZI. And then we just do that iteratively for each word in our document. All right, so now that we come up to this, this is the difficult part. Then implementing an LDA collapsed Gibbs sampler is surprisingly straightforward. It involves setting up the re requisite count variables, randomly initializing them. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Actually, uh, yeah, we need to know what these ends are, right? Uh, I haven't explained that, so. It involves setting up the count variables, randomly initializing them, and then running a loop over the desired number of iterations. All right, the only required count variables include ndk, the number of words assigned to topic k in document d. All right, so how many words we have in topic k uh, for a particular document? And then nkw, the number of times word w is assigned to topic k. What does this tell us? Yeah, so this tells us, right, how many times do we have topic? Uh, how many times is W assigned to topic K? This right here uh, is what we're going to use to get phi because phi tells us what is the distribution of the words for a particular topic K. So you can imagine, let's see, however, for simplicity and efficiency, we also keep a running count of nk, the total number of times any word is assigned to topic k. All right, so what for this in the end, we can just get nkw. So we get all the words in the vocabulary for a particular topic. If we just then divide by nk, which is uh, the number of times any word is assigned to topic k, so it's a normalization, then we get this this distribution right here. So then what we get here is basically the percentage of what word is most common in topic K. Um, and then similarly, we can also get theta D. Um, but but so just know that from these count variables, we can basically get the distribution uh, in the end. All right, finally, in addition to the obvious variables, such as representation of the corpus W, we need an array Z, which will contain the current topic assignment for each of the N words in the corpus. Um, all right, and then they also write here, finally, in addition, for the obvious variables, uh, we need an array Z, which is the current topic assignment. Um, yeah, because we need to know what topic is most uh, sort of what percentage of, of this document belongs to what topic. All right, because a Gibbs sample procedure involves sampling from distributions conditioned on all other variables, before building a distribution from equation 11, we must remove the current assignment from the equation. So, um, so you know, uh, it, it is, if we look at the conditional here, 
we see that it's conditioned on all the other words, but not this particular one that we're looking at. So they just say that we need to remove the current assignment uh, because we have some already guess. Remove that and then sample it. Um, uh, so it's just a small detail, I think. But so this is how the it will look like. We first, and so this is quite simple after all we have gone through. So here we have topic assignment Z and we initialize the count, or this is the output, sorry. Uh, but we also here, we initialize Z and all the counts. So we initialize all of them. Uh, then for number of iterations, we go through here, they say the entire corpus, but you know we go through each document and word. So we go through each document and then we go through each word in each document. We, uh, we take out a particular word and we take out what is our current topic. And then here we remove our guess. So this is because we want to set, uh, we want to condition on Z minus I rather than also Z I. So this is just to remove our current understanding of this. And then here we sample using that uh, formula that we came up with, uh, the probability that this particular word belongs to a particular topic, right? So we get percentage of each, and then we resample it. Uh, yeah, so we, we resample it, and then we update that topic, and we do that by also adding the increment. And so we do this all, uh, like all the time and uh, repeatedly until hopefully we converge, and then we return the counts and also Z. So that's uh, basically how it works. The difficult part, right, was first understanding, well, there's a lot of things, <laughs> but uh, first, you know, why we use Dirichlet distribution or how that looks like, uh, what it is we're trying to get from this uh, with the phi and theta, and then understanding how we can remove phi and theta to use collab collapsed Gibbs sampling uh, and how we come up with this formula right here that we can just plug in. And there's a lot of details, right? This is a lot of details. Uh, and hopefully you have some intuition as to how they come up with it, but maybe you need to go through it yourself if you really want to understand it and all the details of it. Um, but yeah, so that's it for LDA with collapse Gibbs sampling. Uh, in the next video, I will uh, use this right here and we will get a working implementation that uh, you can use on any corpus so with a set of documents and then uh, you can uh, find the, the distribution of the top for a particular document and then what words is in a particular topic. All right, so uh, I'll hopefully see you in the next video and thank you so much for watching this one. Uh, remember to subscribe and like the video if you thought it was useful and hope to see you in the next video.